Hey everyone, welcome to all. I'm Abhishri B and I'm here to present on the topic Brain Computer Interface Technology. My guide is Assistant Professor Anija George. So these are the contents that I will be presenting uh, here. Firstly, the history of PCI, working, signal acquisition methods, signal processing and feature extraction, block diagram of PCA, types of PCIs, challenges and solutions, application of PCA, recent technological advancement, advantages and disadvantages, and future prospects. So, BCA stands for Brain Computer Interface Technology, which is a communication system that allows direct interaction between human brain and external devices. Basically, BCA typically involves the use of sensors or electrodes to record brain activity, which is then processed and translated into commands or input for computers, machines or other applications. BCA technology is still in its early stages of development, but it has the potential to have a major impact on our lives. Moving on to the history of BCA technology, uh, in 1924, Hans Berger discovers EEG or electroencephalography and he analyzes the interrelation of EEG and brain diseases. Research on BCIs began at the University of California, Los Angeles in 1970. In 1987, Philip Kennedy builds the first intracortical brain computer interface by implanting neurotropic corn electrodes into monkeys. Following years of animal experimentation, the first neuroprosthetic device is implanted in humans in 1990. In 2005, Matthew Nagel was one of the first person to use a BCI to restore functionality lost due to paralysis. In 2013, Duke University researchers successfully connected the brains of two rats with electronic interfaces that allowed them to directly share information. In 2021, Neuralink, which is a company founded by Elon Musk in 2016, demonstrated a monkey playing the game Pong using Neuralink implant. Moving on to the working of BCA technology, it mainly involves five steps. First is uh, detection of brain signals in the form of electrical signals. Second, signal acquisition. Third, signal processing. Fourth, decoding. And fifth is device control. So, signal acquisition. Signal acquisition is the first step in BCA process. It involves recording electrical signals from the brain using electrodes placed on the scalp or implanted directly into the brain. The type of electrodes used and the placement of electrodes depend on the type of PCIs being used. So the signals obtained may be, uh, uh, obtained may be from scalp, which is electroencephalography, or from brain surface, which is electrocorticography, or even implanted electrodes within the brain. Next step is signal processing. These acquired brain signals are processed by a computer. This processing involves amplifying and filtering the signals to remove noise and extract relevant information. Next is feature extraction. Advanced algorithms are applied to identify specific patterns or features in the brain signals. These patterns may correspond to thoughts, intentions, or commands. Fourth step is decoding. The extracted features are translated into actionable commands or information. Final step is device control. The decoded information is used to control external devices such as computers, robotic cams, wheelchairs, or communication devices. Signal acquisition methods. There are basically two types of signal acquisitions. First is electroencephalography or EEG. EEG measures electrical activity of the brain by placing electrodes on the scalp. 
It is a non-invasive uh, type of PCA and commonly used in PCAs for ta tasks like controlling computer processors, spelling devices, or playing video games. Second acquisition method is electrocorticography or ECOG. ECOG involves placing electrodes directly on the surface of the brain, typically beneath the skull. This is an invasive procedure, so it provides higher spatial resolution and better signal quality compared to EEG. Signal processing methods. So what is signal processing? It is a process of converting raw brain signals into a form that can be analyzed by a computer. This includes the following step. Uh, first is filtering. Filtering is the process of removing unwanted frequencies from the signal. Artifact removal is the process of removing unwanted signals from the brain signals such as eye blinks, muscle activity and power line noise. Enhancement is the process of improving the signal to noise ratio of the signal. Feature extraction technique. Feature extraction is the process of identifying the most important features of the signal that are relevant to the task at hand. This could involve identify, identifying specific frequencies, time intervals, or spatial patterns in the signal. There are basically three types of features. First is time domain features. These are features that are calculated from the time domain representation of the signal. Frequency domain features are features that are calculated from the frequency domain representation of the signal. Spatial domain features are features that are calculated from the spatial distribution of the signal. Moving on to the block diagram of BCA technology. Uh, this figure shows the schematic representation of the working of BCI. First, electrical signals are generated from the brain. Then, these signals are detected and recorded by sensors or electrodes placed on the skull or brain surface, that is shown as signal acquisition. Then, these signals are processed by various methods, which includes feature extraction and classification. As I have mentioned before, feature extraction is the process of identifying important features of the signal and it is then classified based on various features. Then these signals are given in command form to the computer. Finally, a feedback is sent from the computer to the brain in which the computer is interfacing with. Moving on to the types of BCAs, there are basically three types of BCAs. First is inversive BCAs. These BCAs require surgical implantation of electrodes or sensors directly into the brain tissue. They offer high precision and data quality, but are inversive and carry certain risks. Inversive BCAs are often used in research and medical applications such as controlling prosthetic limbs or assisting individuals with paralysis. Next is challenges. Uh, first is signal quality and reliability. BCA extracts signals from the brain, but these signals can be weak and noisy due to various factors like muscle activity or environmental interference. Second challenge is BCAs can either involve implanting electrodes into the brain which is inversive or external uh, or using external sensors like EEG that is not inversive. Inversive BCAs offer better signal quality but come with surgical risk and ethical concerns. While non-inversive BCAs are safer but provide weaker signals. Third challenge is uh, BCAs often require users to undergo training and calibration to adapt the system to their unique brain patterns. This process can be time consuming and may limit the usability of BCIs. Next is ethical and privacy concerns. BCIs raise important ethical questions regarding user con consent, privacy, and the potential misuse of personal brain data. Ensuring data security and privacy is a significant challenge. Next is cost and accessibility. BCIs, especially inversive ones,
can be costly, making them inaccessible to many potential users. Efforts are ongoing to reduce costs and increase accessibility. User acceptance and usability is yet another factor faced by BCA. BCAs must be user-friendly and comfortable to use to be widely accepted. Achieving this balance between functionality and practicality is essential. So what are the solutions for these challenges? Advanced signal processing. Develop more sophisticated signal processing techniques to filter out noise and enhance signal quality. Use hybrid BCAs. Explore hybrid approaches that combine the strength of inversive and non-inversive BCAs to achieve higher signal quality without surgery. Use user-friendly interfaces. Develop intuitive and user-friendly interfaces that require minimal training and calibration. Clear consent processes. Establish clear consent processes for data usage and sharing, ensuring users have control over their information. Advanced materials. Research and implement advanced materials and technologies to enhance the durability and safety of implanted BCAs. Next is applications of BCA. Assistive technology is one of the important applications of BCI. Using BCA technology, a person with disabilities can control wheelchairs, robotic cams, and assistive devices. This can give people with disabilities a new level of independence and mobility. Another application of BCA is in the field of mental health. BCAs are being explored as a potential tool for treating mental health conditions such as depression and anxiety. Next is entertainment and gaming. BCAs have the potential to revolutionize the entertainment and gaming industries by providing a more immersive and intuitive way to interact with the virtual world. So BCAs could be used to create truly immersive gaming experiences that allows players to control their in-game characters with their thoughts and emotions. Personalized uh, learning is another application of BCI in the field of education. Another application of BCI is in the field of military and defense. BCIs have the potential to revolutionize the military and defense industries by providing new ways to control weapon systems gather intelligence and enhance human performance. So that's all about the applications of BCI. Next is uh, recent technological advancement, Neuralink N1 chip. Neuralink is a company founded by Elon Musk in 2016 that is developing implantable brain machine interfaces. The N1 chip is one of their latest developments and it is able to interface directly with more than 1000 different brains. This allows for much more precise control of PCAs than previous technologies. Second is wireless PCAs. Wireless PCAs are another area of active research. Wireless PCAs would allow users to move more freely without being tethered to a computer or other device. Third, technology, technological advancement uh, is in the field of neural recording and uh, stimulation. PCAs are being used to record and stimulate neural activity. This can be used to study the brain, diagnose and treat neurological disorders and even improve cognitive function. Advantages and disadvantages. Still, BCI is in its early stages of development. It has both advantages side and disadvantages side. So, moving on to the advantages of BCI, enhanced communication is one of the advantages of BCI. It helps people with severe disabilities communicate and interact with the world using their thoughts. Assistive technology, they make assistive devices more accessible, benefiting individuals with the disabilities. Brain-to-brain -brain communication is yet another advantage of PCA. It may enable direct brain-to-brain -brain communication, enhancing collaboration. Moving on to the disadvantages of BCA. It is an inversive procedure. Many BCAs require inversive surgery, which poses risk like infection and tissue damage. 
privacy and ethical concerns brain data acquisition raises privacy concerns and mind reading technology raises ethical questions safety concerns implanted devices may malfunction be rejected by the body or have long term health impacts so moving on to the future prospects of pca technology mental disorders pcas can be used to treat mental disorders such as depression and anxiety for example a pca could be used to deliver targeted stimulation to the brain helping to regulate mood and behavior virtual reality pcas can be used to create more immersive and realistic virtual reality experiences for example a pca could be used to track eye movements allowing the user to control the vr environment with their gaze uh another future prospect is in the field of neuro rehabilitation bcs can be used to help people with paralysis or other motor impo- impairments regain movement gaming is also at another uh, improvising field BCs can be used to create new and exciting gaming experiences. For example, a BCA could be used to control a game character with your thought. So, brain-computer interface technologies are paving the way for a new era of communication and control, where our thoughts and intentions can directly interact with the digital system. While still evolving. These technologies hold great promise for improving life and expanding our capabilities. As we explore this frontier, it is essential to balance innovation with ethical consideration to ensure a responsible and inclusive future for BCA applications. These are the references I took for presenting here. Thank you.